one is ready. And I will pass it to Baba Malik. Peace family, good to see everyone. And those who I don't see, good to see your names. And um, for 2021, the words that I will use is uh, gratitude, continue to live in a, a state of gratitude, but also abundance and success. And I'll pass it on to Kenya. There's two Kenyas. I was gonna say it's a couple. <laughs> Okay, I'll, I'll I, and the baker can go next. <laughs> okay, hi everybody. My name is Kenya Crumwell. I am the Black Land and Power Coordinator at National Black Food and Justice Alliance. And I'm sorry for the noise. Um, word for uh, she. My pronouns are she and her. And my word for 2021 is um, courage. Courage. So I'll pass it to the other Kenya. Thank you. My name is Kenya and I am from Dayton, Ohio. I am the outreach director for Co-op Dayton and Gym City Market Cooperative. My pronouns are she, her, and also the recent board president appointee for Unified Power, which is a community land trust here in Dayton. And my word for 2021 would be building. Kenya, who are you kicking it to? Kick it to Rudine. Hi, everyone. My name is Rudlin. Uh, she, her, hers. And I am representing the Renaissance Community Cooperative in Greensboro, North Carolina. I also um, work with the Democracy at Work Institute. Um, based out of uh, based out of Oakland, but we work remotely. And um, my word for for this year, this is a great question. Uh, so many words popped up, and my word for this year is asset building. And I will pass it to um, I will pass it to Noel. Hey everyone, I'm Noel. I live in Atlanta. Um, I thought of the word, like we had a lot of fires this past year, so rebirth. Um, and rebirth of old traditions and ideas. Um, I'm gonna pass it to you. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Megan Washington. I use she, her pronouns. I oversee the marketing and communications at Mariposa Food Co-op, uh, which is the, um, a member owned grocery store in West Philly. And um, my word for 2021 is just going to be continued education, especially over things that um, that I kind of went over last year, just to kind of get smarter, uh, smarter at those things. <laughs> um, so I'm going to pass this over to Jamila. Hi, everybody. It's so nice to see y'all. Um, happy New Year. Uh, my name is Jamila Medley. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I'm executive director with the Philadelphia Area Cooperative Alliance. Um, also um, a, a consultant with Columinate and happy to be supporting Baba Malik and Mark with, um, with the Alliance and, and bringing us all together on these monthly calls. Um, I'll say my word is joy just like reclaiming all the joy for 2021 as we go forward um i will pass it to angela hola hello this is angela and i am a member owner and board member of the detroit people's food co-op and i go by pronouns she her and my word for the 2021 year is action. And I'm not sure who has not gone. Um, let's see. Has Mark gone? I have, I have gone. I was the first one. Oh, okay. 
Um, so I'm not sure who has not gone because I can't tell based on all the names here. So if someone can help me. Amaha. Gracias. Good, thanks, Haley. All right, greetings. Got pizza in my mouth, but uh, <laughs> my name is Amaha from uh, Gym City Market. I uh, also do consulting with Columinates and part of the uh, the Clutch of Courage Fund. Um, and my word for the year would be gathering. And I don't know who, I think, uh, I think Aaron just hopped on. Is that Aaron from Front Ground? Or who, who hasn't gone? I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay, Angela, you want to go? Well, I just got here, so I don't even know what the question is. What are, what's See, the, they, they put you on the spot like that. No, I'm saying. So, uh, actually, I didn't know. I think it was a word for the year and just introducing yourself. A yeah. word for the year. Yeah, your word for the year that speaks to your, your dreams, aspirations for 2021. And your name. Three letters. W-I-N. Win. That's my word for the year. What's up? Yes, win. And welcome. I'm happy to be amongst you all. I'm Angela Sales. I represent Little Africa Food Cooperative here in Cleveland, Ohio. Go Browns, even though we didn't win. We, we, we made history. And uh, yes, let's feed our people. Thank you. Uh, I'll pass it to one community. Is that Erica? Yes, it's Erica. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Erica Hardison from One Community Grocery Co-op in St. Petersburg, Florida. And since you had to big up the Browns, I'm going to go ahead and say go Bucks. And we're doing the Super Bowl. If anybody's um, a football watcher. Um, my word for the year is progress. And I am going to pass it to, I don't see everybody. Um, Malik, did you go yet? Yes. Help her out, Mark. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Baba Malik went. Um, Dara, did you didn't go though? I have not. No, greetings everybody. It's so um, amazing to see y'all's faces. Um, I'm having a little bit of an emotional reaction to just, just think about where we started to seeing y'all continue to hold this space down and um and just very grateful dara cooper she her I'm the executive director of the national black uh, food and justice alliance this was um the space was kind of my instigating of trying to play matchmaker between black leg co-ops and to see y'all continue to build i'm just um just deeply heartened and excited um, my word is um i'm a cheat I'm gonna say, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say manifestation slash hashtag, let's get it y'all. So that's, that's my word. Um, Aaron, are you, are you on the call yet? I would love to kick it over to you. You not here? Okay, I'm gonna kick it to um, Jasmine. <clears throat> Greetings everyone. Um, back to Jasmine. Jasmine. Sorry y'all. Dr. Jazz, Jasmine. Um, I use she, her pronouns. I'm originally from New Orleans. I'm currently holding it down right now in Tuskegee for a little bit. Um, I'm a consultant with the National Black Food and Justice Alliance working on the Black Food Mapping Project. And my dreams, my word right now is onward. So onward, y'all. And I um, want to pass it to... Um, I don't see anyone on my screen that hasn't gone besides Sav. You yeah, I'll go. Um, my name is Sav. I use they, them pronouns. Um, I'm originally from Detroit, but I currently live in Vermont, in central Vermont. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm a nonprofit worker with one particular uh, white-led ag like agriculture nonprofit that focuses on young farmers, but hopefully not for much longer. Um, because my word for the year is self-determination. So there we go. And yeah, if somebody could just jump in, because I have no idea who's gone yet. Hi, 
Um, I'll go. My name is Michaela Randolph. Um, my pronouns are she, her. I'm based in Los Angeles, um, traditional territory of the Tomba people. Um, I am the board president of Sola Food Co-op. Okay, I'm board president of Sola Food Co-op, um, and we're organizing uh, here in South Los Angeles. And uh, my word for the year is alignment. Um, and I am going to pass it to Soraya. I believe you haven't gone, and hopefully I pronounced your name correctly. You got it right. Thank you. Um, yes, my name is Soraya. I am the Administrative and Logistics Coordinator with the Alliance. My pronouns are she and they. And I am thinking about a lot of the words that y'all have already said because they were great, but I guess I'll stick with gratitude. Uh, gratitude is the attitude. And I will pass it to, um, you got my name right. I don't want to pronounce anybody's name wrong, Arlene. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Arlene Wilborn. I am the general manager for the North Flint Food Market. We are breaking ground in March. Grand opening is April of 2022. I am so thrilled. <laughs> and my word here is new beginnings. And I'm going to pass it off to Richard Diaz. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Richard Diaz. I'm a community organizer in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And, um, you know, this year brings tons of opportunities to do work. And quite frankly, here we, we want to use community organizing to be able to make developments happen in disenfranchised parts of our city, you know build our workforce, build the capacity of our people so that they have access to capital and a path to upper mobility. So yeah, my one word would be uh, hungry. You know, I'm, I'm hungry for, for work and the ability to, to make these ideas happen. And, uh, if you haven't gone, I, I can't see the screen right now. So if you haven't gone, uh, feel free to just nominate yourself. Yes, please jump in. Are we done? Okay. Quiva, wait, 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 right quick. Quiva, you're muted. Uh-huh, thank you. You're still muted. You're still muted, Quiva. <laughs> Is that better? Can you hear me now? Yeah, we got you. All right, thank you, Baba Malik. Hi, everyone. My name is Raqui Bay. Um, I, most people call me Quiva. I live in Pittsburgh. I'm the founder and executive director of the Black Urban Gardeners and Farmers of Pittsburgh. One word that speaks to, I just jumped on, forgive me for my tardiness, that speaks to our dreams and our inspiration, I suppose, fruition because um, our community cooperative store should be opening up in the summer. We're excited about that. Um, yeah, um, it's good to be here. Thank you. This is Janet Howard with Fertile Ground Food Cooperative uh, in Raleigh, North Carolina. And we, I bring you all greetings from our uh, president, Aaron Dale Bird, and our board members, and my word is empowerment. Thank you. All right, have we got to everyone? Speak now, please. All right. I mean, if there's anyone, if we, if anyone here knows of anyone who hasn't gone, please call them out. But if not, um, Jamila, take it away, please. All right. Thanks, everybody. Um, it's glad to hear from some of these updates with these um, store openings pending. This is um, really exciting to hear. Uh, so this afternoon, um, we're going to just spend some time in conversation um, with Rudlin and Megan here. They'll have an opportunity to introduce themselves. 
And we're um, talking about leadership and democracy, which sometimes I think in many traditional settings don't often feel like those are two words that should go together and in practice how in, in traditional organizations and, and instructors you don't usually think about democratic leadership. But we definitely do, I think in our cooperative spaces, um, co-ops are often thought about as being inherently democratic spaces. And that often is practiced through how um, member owners participate through voting in their co-ops. But what else is there? What other opportunities are there for democratic expression in our cooperatives? And I think as our um, recent political climate and elections and so much um, has really lifted up for us is that democracy should be, and for many of us is a practice. And so when we're thinking about that for our cooperatives, um, the opportunity to interrogate what does um, democratic or participatory leadership look like in our co-ops, um, I could think of no two better people <laughs> to invite um, than Rudlin and, and Megan, both of whom I have worked with. Um, they are beams of light, solidarity, great competency and leadership um, from so many different angles within um, the cooperatives and organizations that they work with. So I'm just gonna ask, um, you know, Megan, maybe we'll start with you. If you could introduce yourself. We, again, um, tell us a little bit about Mariposa Food Co-op, um, what it does and, and anything else you wanna share about yourself to get us going. Hi everyone. Um, again, my name is Megan. I am the marketing coordinator at Mariposa Food Co-op, um, which is the consumer-owned uh, natural foods grocery store. It's been in the West Philly area, more specifically Cedar Park, if you're familiar with Philly at all. Um, it's been in that neighborhood since 1971, and it was um, primarily a member-only um, grocery store up until 2012 when it moved, um, expanded or moved to a new location and then became um, a lot more open to the public. And to give you a little bit of background on the store, it's, um, it's situated in a neighborhood in Philadelphia where there's lots of, um, it's a, a primarily black neighborhood, but there's also lots of gentrification, lots of, um, you know, more affluent whites kind of moving in. Uh, so it's, it's kind of like on the crux of a lot of change um, happening in, in that particular neighborhood, um, even though it's been there for, for such a long time. But um, I don't know if I mentioned you she, her pronouns, I'm also a mom of two little young ones. I have a son who's one and a daughter who's three. And um, I think that that's it about me uh, so far. And then I guess we'll get into uh, two more questions and things about the co-op um, a little later in, in the discussion. Thank you. Thanks. How about you, Rudlin? Hi, yes, yes. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome again. I'm so glad to see everyone on the call. And when I jumped on, it was um, it was like four Black women, and it was just so refreshing to jump on a call and immediately feel um, feel welcomed and, and a part of something. So I'm I'm happy to be in this space and happy that we all have created this space. Um, but like I said, my name is Rudlin. I use she her hers pronouns. Uh, I was born in Haiti, and um, and I currently live in North Carolina. I like to think that I uh, I come from the global south and now I live in the American south, which a lot of similarities and a lot a lot of differences. Um, uh, but uh, but my origins are in the south, and I am proud to say that. Uh, I am the former board chair of the um, of the Renaissance Community Cooperative here in Greensboro, North Carolina. And this was the um, this was the first full service cooperative grocery store, and um, that was established in a food desert. So Northeast Greensboro um, it hadn't had a grocery store for uh, about 15 years, right before we started talking about um, the Renaissance Community Cooperative um, and bringing in our own grocery store, as opposed to waiting for um, a, waiting for a Walmart or a, a Winn Dixie to um, to come in and, and, and build us a store. And so uh, with uh, so uh, th this effort was um, driven by our elders, right? Our elders who had been 
already um, organized um, to fight a landfill that had been brought into the community, right? Who had won that fight, had organized the community and saw an opportunity to, um, to use that momentum to, um, to, to bring the community back together to address this need, right? This need for um, access to fresh, healthy foods. And out of that, we, um, we were able to create the Renaissance Community Cooperative. Um, you know, we were, we were community owned and that was really important to us. And our vision was, um, was rooted in our, in our community, right? Having, uh, making sure the community had access to fresh food, um, making sure the community, um, that, op that folks in, in our communities had access to good jobs. Um, and then we wanted our grocery store to, again, be an example of our capacity to do for our own and to do for ourselves, right? Like we had, we had kicked out this landfill already and we were like we can do this and we want um and we wanted this to spring springboard other activities and um and efforts that the community saw and so that was uh that was a lot of that was a lot of work and um and we were able to open and and, and have our grocery store for um about two and a half years um so that's about the the grocery store we'll learn more about that i'm trying to think anything about me i'm a, a mother of three dogs <laughs> So, um, so if you hear any barks in the background, it's it's the dogs being annoyed that I'm on on calls all day every day. Um, so, uh, so I'll keep myself paused and on mute when I when I can. Thanks, Rudlin. I wonder if you could just um, speak a little bit briefly describe um, Dowie. I'm on a secret mission. I mean, it's not really a secret. Some of y'all, some people know about this, but. Our sectors, Black folks across co-op sectors need to be organizing more. Um, so I definitely, um, in part of this session, in my experience working with, with both of you is rooted in democratic workplace experiences. Um, so Rudlin, I'm, could you just like briefly say what, what Dowie is and we'll get into maybe some connections a little later. Yeah, yeah. So Democracy at Work Institute for Dowie. Um, is a, a, a national nonprofit that works to support uh, uh, the expansion of worker cooperatives or employee-owned businesses across the United States. Um, so we uh, we provide research to the field on um, on worker cooperatives and um, and specifically uh, uh, during the COVID times, right? Like how how are how are employee-owned businesses or businesses where um, employees have a have a vote and say how are they doing compared to to conventional businesses right and so we were able to do some really good research on um, how how our uh, worker cooperatives are doing um, which is faring uh, slightly better than you know than conventional businesses because of the participatory um, aspects of our co-op um, Gawi also um, also is a convener of a, a of a national a network of folks that are um, um, that are focused on on conversion, so working to um, to convert traditional businesses that um, that uh, that that may be bought up or, or or gentrified, really, right? Bought up by by a bank and 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 removed from our communities. What if we sold them to our employees and kept them um, kept them rooted in our communities and, and created wealth? Uh, by um, by by creating more business owners, right, um, through the employees. So we work. We convene the national um, network that that um, that's working on conversions, um, and then uh, and then we also convene um, communities of practice and 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 do trainings to to support business owners and developers to start up their business and run their businesses, their cooperative businesses. Thanks, Ruslan. Um. So we're talking about this construct. I'm gonna ask um, Rudlin and Megan a few questions and then um, we'll open it up so that you all can have some time to, to chat with them and, and, and have, we can open up the conversation a bit, but to get us some more grounding, um, we're talking about creating democratic and participatory leadership. Um, and this is a group of folks who are in the process of, um, of opening new food co-ops. Co and so to start, um, Megan, could you give us, you know, how do you define leadership and who gets to lead in a co-op? So for me, leadership is 
I think it really comes from an individual or group of people rather who kind of see a vision for an organization or whether it be a mission and they can kind of see it um see it to 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 its end and I think the way I kind of define it is a, a person that's kind of able to lead, but then also able to listen as well. And I think that is um, critically important, especially when working in the in the cooperative space. I know prior to working at a co-op, I was in corporate America and I worked for a small business and it was it was the boss's way or else. Like he was firing people left and right and he didn't even care. And this was also a, you know, a black owned uh, company with black employees. But we didn't there in, in his mind, it was like, okay, this is mine, mine, mine versus like, you know, in a, in a cooperative setting it's really, you know, it's all of ours together. And I think that it's a, a really kind of true, a, a true business model that kind of gives us all a part of, you know, of ownership. And it works out obviously a little different, um, like with consumer owned organizations versus like worker co-ops and all. But I think at the end of the day though, like with, with both of the models that is really about kind of sharing, sharing the wealth and sharing the ownership among, among, among everyone. So um, that's kind of how, how I see uh, leadership. And as far as who gets to lead in the co-op, it's, it, it gets a little tricky <laughs> with consumer owned uh, co-ops in particular, because we do have our board of delegates, which is made up of our, our member owners. But then there's also well, obviously on the operations side, we have our general manager and, the, and other leadership staff who kind of work with um, a lot of the day to day operations that happens at the grocery store. Um, but I think in a perfect world and I in a perfect world, just these kind of two uh, entities like working together, you know, the GM kind of taking any issues or problems that come up among like the staff members to the board and also the board holding the GM accountable for, um, you know, whatever, uh, uh, what's the word, whatever, um, you know, the ends are really kind of holding them accountable and making sure that they're meeting the goals that are that have been set rather by, by the board of delegates. Rudla, anything to add to that? Yeah, that was very comprehensive, Megan. Thank you for um, for that definition. So yeah, I would say you know leadership is the ability to to motivate and facilitate a group towards a common um, and I would say agreed upon goal or vision. And I think in a co-op specifically, I would add that the that a leader in a co-op needs to be able to to address the the, the needs of the business, right? So thinking about the traditional. Um, the traditional leadership uh, information that, or the traditional uh, information that leaders need to know, right, to, 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 to get the business to run, right, so usually they have to, leaders know the finances and, and, um, and the information typically reserved for leaders, right, but I would also say that not just, that a leader um, or leadership doesn't just address the, the business needs, but the leader of a co-op or leaders in a co-op need to also be able to um, to teach and share their power with the with their um, with the other members um, and employees of the co-op, right? And so what what I what I mean by that is um, is figuring out how to involve a more more of the uh, of the employees, more of the employees in in the um, in the decision making, right? How do we how do you share um, how do you share um, information, financial information, so that um, so that folks feel empowered to um, to speak up and be and be their own leader and, and to give voice to their own concerns. And so I think that's what's really unique about cooperatives is that leaders don't just need to know business skills, right, or like those hard um, uh, those hard business skills that we often think about, but um, co-op leaders also need to um, also need to be able to um, to be able to teach and then share their power as a leader. And then who can be a leader? Yes, yeah, such a great question too. And I think, Megan, you talked about the, the governance aspects, right? Like there's, there's clear, there's, there's governance where there's, um, there's a board that has, that has leadership and has power. The manager has, has leadership and has power. And then, and then um, the workers, right? Where, where do their leadership and power um, um, lie? And I would say that what I think is really important, especially in the startup phase, is that um, it, it, as we're as we're 
as we're learning how to work together and cooperate, right? Which is like the big part um, and the part that's harder to teach. Like how do you teach um, it, it making decisions with eight other people when we're so used to like the boss makes the decision, right? Um, and so I think, I think I always encourage people to, um, to allow, uh, to disperse the leadership, right? To, to use the talent, to, to aggregate the talent and the, um, and the, um, the talent and the, the, the skills that people have and, and, and elevate it so that they're able to lead in a, in a, in a specific way, right? Or in a specific, um, um, in a specific project to be able to um, leverage all the skills and talents that exist in your, um, in your worker co or in your, in your co-op, in your food co-op, um, as opposed to um, just having leadership or having uh, leadership skills concentrated in one or two different people, right? Because in a co-op, we all, we all got to make it work, right? And I think uh, finding a way to disperse and build leaders out of, um, out of everyone is really important. Thanks for that. I think, you know, that when I first, I got introduced to um, cooperatives actually by working at Mariposa Food Co-op where um, Megan works now. And, you know, that I worked there between 2012 and 2015. And at that time, you know, the, the store had just transitioned from being members only and closed to the public um, to after having a 40 year history, suddenly being open to the public, right? Um, and having these systems in place that were really, um, that, that, that worked well in a particular setting, right? And in a, in a particular experience. So for example, when I got there, we didn't have a general manager at Mariposa Food Co-op. And so the practice around democratic leadership was really in thinking about how do we co-general manage <laughs> this store together amongst department heads really was, was the practice. And there was also, there was the board, there was the membership, there was this, this body of people functioning as the general manager. And there was also a staff collective, right? So there was space for the staff to organize and have, um, you know, expressions of, 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 of power and leadership as well. I can talk about all kinds of reasons why that didn't last <laughs> um, as, as the store transitioned um, into its new um, iteration. Um, you know, so Megan, I wanna ask you this question and then I'll have a different question for you, um, Rutland. But you know, like thinking about that history, and I know that you came to Mariposa after all of that went down. Um, you know, what is this? Ex how how do you experience um, participatory and democratic leadership? What 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 is being done at Mariposa now? Because it is a traditionally hierarchical food food co-op. But what are other expressions of that beyond the general manager in, in the board of directors that, that maybe say staff are participating in? Sure, one, one thing that comes to mind is that um, a few years ago, actually maybe a couple of years when I actually first started, there was concern among um, some of our cashiers uh, around, and, and some of our member owners too, but around like the idea of security so like um, I'm for those who aren't familiar, like we're kind of in the middle of like, just like a regular business corridor and it's, you know, all types of folks up and down the street. Uh, more particularly, there are folks experiencing homelessness outside of the store who may, you know, you know, ask for money, food, whatever. Like if you a regular kind of city goer, then that's like, that's, that's every day. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's nothing like to, to a big deal to me, but for, for some of our member owners and like some of the staff, it was like, well, you got to do something about these people outside. Da, 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 da. But I, I say all that to say there was um, one of our coworkers who's no longer with the store, but she she turned in, um, she was a cashier and also a manager on duty. And she turned in a, a proposal wanting to have some form of security guard like at the store. And there were some folks who were like vehemently opposed to the idea. There were other people, mainly, you know, people who had to actually interact with the members complaining about it, the actual folks outside. So sometimes have to diffuse situations like at nighttime and like, 
there were people who were really for the idea. So in order for us to kind of come to a solution, we had like an all staff meeting. So within that meeting, all the, um, we, there were about 40 some people on our staff. So we broke into small groups of four or five and we kind of listed like the pros and cons of like having, you know, a security guard, like what does that mean for the store? To give you all a little bit more uh, background on Mariposa, it's, um, it's a multiracial like co-op, but for real, for real, it's like really, it's really white centered, like in a lot of like the people who shop there, the people that work there, so forth and so on. So a lot of it was like, what would it look like for this like white center co-op to all of a sudden have a security guard and like start, you know, people, not, we didn't want to make our, our black members and, and other black, you know, folks in our community feel uncomfortable with like, you know, a security person in the store. But nevertheless, it was ultimately voted on by the staff to actually have, you know, this uh, this person come on. So one of the um, the requirements was that we use like a black owned company to kind of facilitate this work. And it was, um, I would I would call it like a success in a sense that, you know, we everybody was able to, to, to give their input like from all different areas of the co-op. It didn't really last long because, um, you know, folks, nothing was really kind of getting accomplished by it. But I think for me, that was my first experience and like working in a participatory, uh, democratic participatory kind of uh, setting, um, you know, coming from, from the corporate arena that it really, at that time, like every single person who was at that staff meeting, who was on staff, like gave their input, their reasons why they wanted to go this route or not. And then also, like I said, ultimately, we kind of like, you know, did away with um, the guard altogether because it just didn't really fit. It was for like a trial period, maybe six months or so. But um, for me, that was kind of like one of my first experiences in, in being able to, um, to participate that way as an employee, but then also, you know, as a, as a manager as well. So hopefully that answers your question. Thanks for that example. Yeah, I think sometimes, you know, we learn a lot from the process, even if, you know, the thing we decided on, we, we figure out, okay, maybe that doesn't work, but, but there's a lot of learning and getting to those yeses and nos. Um, I'm gonna ask you, Ruth Lynn, a, a question and then maybe we'll have one last question before we end, open it up for, for others. Um, and this gets at, you know, I think for, for participants here, um, I've heard numerous versions of management structures <laughs> um, potentially happening amongst the various co-ops that are gonna open. So everything from like more traditional structures to maybe some co-ops that might want to be worker owned, um, some kind of hybrid thing where, you know, there's there's consumer ownership and worker ownership. And, and you know, so there's a lot of ways in which um, leadership and ownership gets a play out. And because, you know, you have this rich um, firsthand experience working in the food co-op space through your work at, at Renaissance, and you also like work very diligently and in support of worker cooperatives, I'm wondering in particular, because so many in our in the food co-op sector are not familiar <laughs> with how worker co-ops function, um, are, are there tools or, or strategies around leadership that you see be effective in the worker co-op space that um, you think our food co-op should pay attention to, maybe consider adapting? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question <laughs> and, <laughs> and a big question. Um, Yes, yes, definitely, right? Um, so uh, I, I teach about governance a lot, and um, as a as a member of a, a of a uh, of a board, right? As a as a participant in governance, it's like it's I I love talking about different structures and how to how to figure out you know how uh, um, how to structure a, our cooperatives to meet the needs of our of our members. And so I, what I always say is like, regardless of how you structure your governance, whether it's the traditional, uh, whether it's traditional top down or whether you decide to do um, a, a more collectivist approach where instead of having a manager, you decide to form committees to, to, um, to handle managerial uh, functions, right? So instead of a manager, you might have a finance committee that does finances, an HR committee that does HR. Um, as opposed to a general manager. 
So which, whichever way you structure the, the the governance, I think what's really important in a, in in our co-ops is to uh, is to be clear of um uh, of when when members are wearing which hat, right? So when are you? So when I when 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 is the um when is when is you or the member of the co-op acting on behalf of the board, right? And making decisions and speaking on behalf of the board versus when when are members um, speaking on behalf of themselves as as uh, as as members or worker owners for a worker cooperative? I think that distinction is really um, important for us when we're. <laughs> When we're talking about um, governance and um, in, in the ways that we structure, right? You can still have a collectivist um, structure, but it's important to know when you're when you're speaking on behalf of the board versus eh, eh, versus um, versus yourself as a member. Um, but one of the tools uh, that I I think has been really helpful for me in my worker co-op space that I um, that would have been helpful in my food co-op space um, when I was a, 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 a board chair of the RCC um, is, is around how we talk about um, uh, how, how, how we talk about democracy and participatory um, leadership in our co-op, right? And so uh, at Dowie, we say, we, we say that the, um, that a democratic workplace it, uh, it needs to needs to feature um, needs to have a high level of of, of transparency and um, and 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 democracy, right? Um, obviously, and so um, and so we broke this down into a, a democratic uh, workplace. It's like building a house, okay? And the house, as we know, has four um, four corner posts, um, and so we see these corner posts as um, as money. Right. So, in a democratic workplace, or in a, in our food co-ops, right, um, uh, learning how to share information about money, right, um, so that so that the members of the co-op are um, more informed about how money is flowing in and out of the co-op. The second corner post is information, and so uh, as as our as a food co-op, learning how to share um, how to share um, basic uh, how to share information. And a lot of times that includes information that's traditionally reserved for um, um, just managers, right? But but finding a way to um, to include a, um, a, the workers and and the employees to be able to um, have access to information about their business. Thirdly, uh, is a democratic workplace or um, uh, should should learn how to share power. And I think a lot of us that that's the one we're most familiar with, which is like. Oh yeah, we all, you know, our members can vote. We're a co-op. We know how to share power. Um, but being really intentional about um, a, a, how how voice is heard and, and how you're um, how you're making decisions. And then lastly, it's um, a, a democratic workplace uh, it has to learn how to um, develop its people, right? And um, and 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 that's really important because um, developing developing well, people really allows them to be able to um, to share in those other corner posts, to be able to make meaningful decisions about money, about information, about um, how to how to share their voice. And I think this this framework, like in the simplify, like these are the four things that we need to be like focused on or really um, uh, uh, really intentional about uh, about focusing on so that we can make sure that we're practicing democracy in our workplace. Like I would have loved that, right? Like the board could have easily sat down and been like, okay, like how are we gonna make sure we're sharing information or what information do we need to share? How do we make sure we're sharing money? Like that would have been so helpful for us. So, um, so that's a, um, a, 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 a tool that I think is, is relevant, not just in the worker co-op space where um, the things that we might share might be um, a little bit different because um, the members are also workers, um, or the, yeah, the 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 owners are also the the workers, but I think in the food co-op space, like all of these are still really relevant, right? These four corner posts, like in your co-op, how are you all going to decide how you're going to share money um, and information about money? So that might just be a critical number, right? Like we're all going to we all need to make this much amount of money, or we need to whatever it is, whatever the critical number is. Um, Right, so sharing money, sharing information, 
what is the information that that would be helpful for um, and the employees to know to help make decisions in your co-op. The third is sharing power, and that's through voice and vote. And then lastly is people, right? How do we develop our, 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 our people? And that's like, you know, that's developing leadership. You're developing your leadership pipeline through developing people as well. Um, so I hope that was, I just did a quick recap. I hope that was helpful. Awesome. Oh my gosh, thank you. Uh, is there like a poster or like a one pager for that? Yeah, actually we have a whole, we have a whole like toolkit that I can, um, I can check in with you, Jimmy. I think Jamila, you were, you might know this already, but we've developed a whole toolkit with, um, with activities for each of these, these, uh, these four corner posts to, to help figure out like how can you make it applicable in your co-op too so I'm happy to, to share it. and like I said it's totally like it's it's I work in the worker co-op space but every day I'm like I wish I knew this when I was in. like my food co-op could totally use this information so yeah definitely happy to share awesome thank you Rulin thank you Meg Megan for taking time to answer my questions um, before, I, I know we've got some time crunch um, for, for our speakers, so I, I'd like to open um, the opportunity um, if, if anybody has questions um, for Rudlin or, or Megan, we can take a few minutes to, to address those comments, etc. Amaha. Yeah, I had a question. So uh, we're, we're, we're getting ready to, we're going to be a hybrid um, with, when it's all said and done, and we've been you know, we're gonna use the, the great game of business. And I wanted to see if you had any experience with that and if, if you appreciate it or or your thoughts on, on that. Yes, 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 yes. We are actually, um, my my colleague is um, is uh, going through the course right now and, yeah. and adapting it to the, the co-op, um, the co-op context. So yeah, there's definitely some really helpful and useful um, concepts in the great game of business that is that is transferable like critical number that I just that I mentioned before like maybe you know in the in sharing money that maybe it's uh, an easy way to do that to identify a critical number and share that mm -hmm. among the staff and that I learned from the great game of business okay <laughs> right there <laughs> cool yeah happy to yeah. yeah okay no problem yeah I look forward to seeing those tools too I think they'll be very helpful Anybody else? Marinating. I, know. I, I think, get it. I get it. <laughs> oh, Sav, I think I see your hand. Is that your hand or is that my hand? That might have been my hand. <laughs> Advice for new co ops. Megan, Rudlin, any any thoughts? I see in the uh, there's a question in the in the chat. Any any specific advice? Maybe like how do you is, is there a starting point? <laughs> like where do how do you start this? What's the advice when you're getting going with this? One advice I would I would give and a reflection from our experience is that um, we were, you know, we were a community owned uh, uh, co-op and we we were very um, intentional and focused on um, and bringing the community along, making sure that it, it wasn't a group of people's co-op, right? Like it wasn't me and three other people that were, that were actively standing in front, but like this was our co-op and we were gonna make decisions together and we were gonna um, eh, bring in this co-op and build it ourselves. And so we were very intentional on our community meetings and um, in organizing, very, very heavy on our organizing. Um, and then the, the store opened and we started, you know, we got more focused on just running our store, <laughs> more focused on the day-to-day -day businesses, on the day-to-day -day running of the store and the operations. So when community meetings would, would come up, right? It, it was, it, you know, sometimes we would say, oh, man, we're so, we're so busy, we're so tired. Um, let's skip this community meeting. And I think one of our reflections is that the organizing, you know, it's, 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 it has to be throughout the duration of, of, uh, of the lifetime of the, um, of the co-op, right? Like that is, that is, that is what's distinct about our, 
a, um, about us versus the dollar general that's in your neighborhood, right? Like we, 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 we can organize, we can um, bring in that people power that, that, that these corporations cannot. And, um, and we need to lean heavy into that. I think that's, um, a, um, that's one of our, uh, if I could go back, like I, I would have a heavier into um, organizing and, co and staying committed to organizing um, throughout the life of, of the co-op and not just as we're starting up, right? Not just as we're trying to get um, people on board and, and, and getting the store open, but making the organizing part of your um, your day-to-day -day operations. Yeah, I would I would agree as well. And then just kind of keep it in mind, like, you know, like when I know for Mariposa, it's been around for a little while now. And as we think about, you know, a possible like expansion of services, maybe not necessarily a second uh, grocery store, you know, maybe like a child care center or some other kind of social services for the community. I think for us, like, or for even kind of starting a new project like that, it's really keeping in mind, like what, you know, the folks in that particular community want. I think oftentimes um, with food co-ops, especially ones that are, are similar to mine, which are, you know, a lot of um, there's a lot of whiteness kind of floating around them. Like folks really um, try to come so in. <laughs> Sorry about that. So folks try to come in and like you know be like a savior to a community in some kind of capacity. Where I think it really begins with like what Rulon, Rulon said. It's just like really understanding like what the folks in that community want in the first place. Like, do they even want a grocery store to begin with? Like, are they content with what um, what is there? And I think really kind of uh, centering your efforts around like what the what the people need and want, I think would be like a really kind of great um, jumping off point uh, going forward for kind of starting up. And that's also an example of, I see the question of, around beyond voting, what does sharing power look like, right? And that's an example of, of sharing power, right? Not assuming that your committee, your steering committee or, or a small group knows best um, <laughs> what the community needs, right? So, so leaning deeply into the voices and expertise and experience of other people beyond who, who, who are the normal actors in, in your community spaces. Um, I, you know, I'll share, I, I think Megan's example about how the staff was empowered to make a decision about security, right? Like that's not normally probably <laughs> an operational decision that most employees in a grocery store get to make, right? Some group of managers are sitting behind a door someplace deciding on that. So the power, but, but power sharing comes with the responsibility of education, right? So we go back to the co-op principles and thinking about um, principles um, five around education, training and information sharing, right? And so that in order for people to be empowered, they have to be informed. So those who have authoritative leadership responsibility have a responsibility of, of providing education and training so that as you're thinking about these opportunities, to share power, to share responsibility, to share um, who gets to participate in different levels of decision-making throughout the co-op. People have the tools <laughs> and the resources they need to, to, in, to be informed. And I think that that spreads even to your membership, right? Like thinking about how do we ensure that education is continuously op open and, and offered to members so that they are empowered participants as well. Um, I know that wasn't a question for me. But <laughs> I just wanted to share the sharing power looks a lot like collaboration um, as well. I know for me, like I'm a part of like our, I guess our administrative department, which is kind of the folks who are upstairs kind of away from the sales floor from time to time. And I knew in the past there was um, a person, a white woman who held that same position as me. And folks used to say, oh, she never came downstairs. She never like, you know, was uh, interacting with the managers on duty or all the other people on the sales floor. And that was one thing that I was like, in my role, I'm not going to do that. Like, y'all are the people who are carrying the message of like, you know, trying to get people to join the co-op, educating them on like the products and things that we sell. And it's, it is very important for me to like work very, very closely with, you know, um, the folks all throughout the store. And I, and I think oftentimes, um, sometimes people feel like if you, you know, if you're not part of like the, the regular groups who are making decisions and stuff like that. It's, it's just really great to kind of have everybody have a say in like what's, what's going down in the store. 
Um, so that's, I think collaboration is another way to kind of share power, you know, among folks. Thanks. Um, that brings us to, um, oh, I see there's another. Yes, cooperative leadership models versus the traditional leadership models and works best um, for black communities and gentrifying communities. Yeah. I mean, and I think, I, I, I thanks Michaela. I think that this is an opportunity for us to begin that deeper dive into what those models look like and how do we, how do we want to lead? Um, how is black leadership, women's leadership <laughs> different from traditional models of leadership? Um, and I think that that's a lot that can be explored um, in, in this community as, as there is interest, so, so let us know. Um, I want to just say thank you to Megan and Ruth Lynn for um, taking time to, to talk with us this afternoon. Um, Ruth Lynn left uh, her contact information in the chat in case anybody comes up with some additional questions, et cetera, and may want to share later. Um, but that's going to conclude this part of our gathering today. So I'm going to um, pass it over to Baba Malik. Okay, peace. Thank you again, uh, Rulin and Megan. And thank you, Jamila, for your leadership in uh, both setting up, framing the topic, and also finding two excellent presenters to, um, to speak to us. And thank you to all the participants, uh, family who's continued to build with us. Uh, although our process has been imperfect, we're, we're moving ahead and we're building collective power. So uh, each, each time we see new faces, and we will just continue to build because uh, as Aaron Dale reminds us, we are stronger together. So we have some things coming up in the future that we wanna make you aware of. Um, the executive director of the National Black Food and Justice Alliance, the mighty, mighty, mighty Dara Cooper, who is on the line and has just shown her face again, will be presenting on our next call on February the 23rd at three o'clock PM again. Uh, Dara, you wanna take just a second and say hello to the peoples? Hello to the peoples. Also real quick, that's my birthday week, FYI. So we gotta, we gotta do a little turn up too. Okay, you gonna put your cash app in the, in the box or something? No, I'm just gonna ask people to turn up, bring your favorite songs and let's play some music together is what I'm gonna ask. She liked it. Maybe I can get a Molly Wap song. Yeah, you can definitely do that. <laughs> she liked that. She about the business, but she about that uh that black joy. That black too. joy, that's right. <laughs> so, um, so join us on the twenty third. Uh, so as you've just heard, we will be turning up on the twenty third, as well as hearing about um, the National Black Food and Justice Alliance, the work of the alliance, the vision of the alliance, the history of the alliance, and how you can perhaps plug in on a deeper level. Also coming up, uh, so you, you should be reminded that these calls are a partnership. They're co-sponsored by the Food Co-op Initiative. And uh, really it's an outgrowth of our pushing in white spaces that black people should be leading black people and white people don't need to be leading us nowhere period ever. And so for those white people who want to help, they should help uh, resource and facilitate black people leading ourselves. And so that's what this is. So. Food Co-op Initiative has uh, seen, I think, the wisdom of that approach and is supporting these calls and webinars, uh, but we leading it. So that's how, that's how we roll. So the Food Co-op Initiative is having its annual conference, the up and coming conference who many of you have been to from May 11th through 15th this year, it's generally in March, but it's been pushed up a bit and it's gonna be virtual this year. And so uh, details will be coming out soon. But the important thing I want to make you aware of is that the National Black Food and Justice Alliance will be sponsoring what's called Black Led Co-op Day on May the 12th. And so we have a day of activities that we would invite you to register for and participate in. And some of you who are on the call now will be getting with you in the next 24 hours, asking you to be a presenters in some of the sessions that we have planned out. So please put that on your calendar. 
up and coming conference, May 11th through 15th. Uh, the mighty, mighty, mighty Dara Cooper talking about the National Black Food and Justice Alliance on February the 23rd. And so with that, we just wanna uh, wish everybody a strong, uh, peaceful and productive week and month until we gather again, stay on the case for the race, peace and blessings. Peace. Take care, everybody. Right now. Peace. Thank later. you. Peace, love, and hair, Grace. <laughs>